Ähm, wir haben einen Spätkomma. Wir zwingen ihn jetzt dafür auch nicht ganz lateinamerikanisch ganz schnell zu sprechen, sonst kommen die Übersetzer nicht hinterher. Aber wir begrüßen hier, Sie finden es auch auf der Liste, ähm, Andres Giua. Ähm, ich hoffe, ich spreche das richtig aus. Er ist nämlich Italiener von Haus aus und berät den, ähm, in Caracas den Handelsminister. Und ähm, hat wahrscheinlich einen kleinen Mittagsschlaf gemacht, ist ganz frisch und wird uns jetzt alle ähm, nochmal irgendwie mit frischer Energie versorgen. Bitte. Bitte. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, I wish to thank you for the invitation. Thank you to comrades Mehmet Ali Dogan and Grand Oskam who invited me, I mean, they channeled the invitation. They are presently in South America and uh, working, of course, for the solidarity with the Kurdish fight and struggle. And besides, they also assisted me in part of, the, of this uh, presentation. Uh, there, are many, there are mainly two areas which I was asked to uh, explain, mention. One is related to what we call the plurinationalism experience in South America, specifically in Bolivia and Ecuador. And the next one is the community experience in Venezuela. For the first aspect, well, there are there is a link to both items because um, we have community experiences very strong in Bolivia, Ecuador, and also in Venezuela, which are quite different. The reason being that um, in Bolivia and Ecuador, they are mainly indigenous communities um, with deep roots, in the history of the country and the deep roots in the nature and so on, um, which traditionally have been there as community with a strong solidarity and so on. It's a different case Venezuela, where we have only 11.8% uh, of the population in rural areas, so we have 98-something um, percent in urban areas, and there for the project of having the community as a strategy for a revolutionary process is a completely different ball game. We will be there in a few minutes. Let's start from the um, relationship between the democratic confederalisms that leader of Chalam uh, exposed and uh, the, Bolivari the Bolivia and Ecuador experience. Uh, in, the, in the book, Oshalam says that democratic confederalism can be described as a type of self-administration in contrast to the administration of the nation state. In the long run, freedom and justice can only be achieved within a dynamic confederate and democratic process. Neither the total rejection and the full recognition of the state are useful for democratic civil society for efforts. The overcoming of the state, in particular of the nation state, is a long term process. Now, the vanguard. Okay, no mention, thank you to you. The vanguard in this respect as far as Latin American is concerned, not only at community level, but as a country and state level, without doubt is Bolivia. The plurinational state of Bolivia. And I wouldn't try to invent anything. I would just use 
some of the articles of the Bolivia Constitution, the new Bolivia Constitution. The first article says Bolivia becomes a unitary state of law, plurinational, community, free, independent, sovereign, democratic, intercultural, decentralized, and autonomous. Bolivia is founded in the plurality and political, economic, legal, cultural, and linguistic pluralism within the integrating process of the country, of course. Second article of the Constitution says, given the pre-colonial existence of nations and farmers, originally indigenous people, and their ancestral, ancestral dominion over their territories, ensuring their self-determination in the framework of the unity of the state, consisting of their right to self-determination, self-government, to their culture, to the recognition of its institutions and the consolidation of its territorial entities. Article 3. The Bolivian nation is comprised of all Bolivian women and men, nations and native peasants, indigenous people and the intercultural communities and Afro-Bolivians, that is interesting, at the same level as the indigenous communities uh, which have been living for 10,000 years there or more. You have the Afro-Bolivians, descendant uh, of uh, African origin, who are considered a community like any other one. Okay. Any other indigenous one. Article 5. This is an interesting thing, you know. Our official languages of the state of Bolivia, Spanish, and all languages of the nations and indigenous people who are there, and then you have 36 languages, which means 36 nations, right? So I think there are more than even in Kurdistan or in Rojava, what we have there. <laughs> Article 9, the purposes of the Constitution consolidate multi-country identity, identities, encourage mutual respect and plurilingual, intercultural and intracultural dialogue, preserve as historical and human heritage the multinational diversity, diversity and cultural diversity constitutes the essential basis of the community plurinational state. So it's not a matter of being democratic, of being comprehensive, of being kind, etc. The matter is that the strength of the Bolivian state is his diversity. And it's a state policy to promote and strengthen that aspect of Bolivia. In Ecuador, we have something similar, not so strong like in Bolivia, but still there. Ecuador is a constitutional state. This is a constitution of Ecuador, just a few paragraphs. A constitutional state of rights and justice and so on, independent, unitary, intercultural, multinational, and secular. This is Article 1. And Article 3, Fundamental duties of the state of Ecuador strengthen the national diversity in unity. And then they explain in Article 60 uh, that Afro-Equatorians and all indigenous peoples may establish constituencies for the preservation of their culture. The communes which have collective land ownership is recognized. And in Article 257, they may settle constituencies, indigenous or Afro-Ecuadorian, which shall exercise the powers of the corresponding autonomous territorial government. 
and shall be governed by the principles of interculturalism, plurinationality, etc. And the state, in Article 318, will strengthen the management and operation of the community around the water management initiatives and the provision of public services. This is similar to um, the law in Venezuela in relation to communities where specific attention is paid to the transfer of competences and resources of a public service to be deal and managed by the communities. In Rojava, we have a charter, which was approved last year, I think, of social contract. Thank you. We, the people of the autonomous communities, unite in the spirit of reconciliation, pluralism, and democratic participation, so that everyone can express themselves freely in public life, to establish this charter, we declare a political system and a civil administration founded on a social contract that reconciles the rich mosaic of Syria, which means a very similar spirit to what we mentioned so far. This is a similarity between the Bolivia and in less extent also Ecuador spirit of constitution with that of Rojava and that of the democratic confederalism. Now, going to the Venezuelan experience, as I mentioned, we have one chapter of the constitution, which is chapter 8, on the rights of indigenous people, including the right to land, etc. The matter is that the indigenous people represent in Venezuela 2.5% of the whole population. Most people in Venezuela, we are a mixture of races. I would say they are 80% at least. But in terms of indigenous living in their original areas, uh, living according to, the, to their standards and uh, practices and religion, etc., we only have 2.5% of the population, which is 725,000 out of almost 28, 29, sorry, million people. And in general, as I mentioned before, the rural population in Venezuela is only 11.2%. Therefore, in the ideology of Comandante Chavez, the term comuna, the commune, the common, not only embraces economic, social, ethical, cultural aspects that we will try to explain a little bit later, but also socio-territorial equity, as is said in the Homeland Plan, the plan which is a legacy of Chavez, the last big document that Chavez left with the main partners for the next years. Okay. Chavez came, as it was grown, and in, uh, in, uh, in an interior area of agriculture. And he knows well the impact of the strong migration, especially in the half part of the last century, from the uh, countryside to the big cities. And what kind of problem it developed in the ghettos that the thing means, and the deculturalization it means, and so on. So this is when he mentioned the social territorial equity is to redistribute population with a community project. Now, and this seems much more the situation we have, uh, the Turkish movement has in Turkey, where many Kurdish people live in the ghettos near, um, near the big cities in uh, in, um, in Turkey, okay? So there is a similar view of the link between community activity and life and, and government and governance with rural areas and trying to establish, even in the cities, that environment, that culture. This is similar to Zapatista and of course to Oshalam uh, thinking. And the last, 
meeting that President Chavez had with his Minister Council, which was October 20 last year, he made a special um, point in relation to the Comuna. He said, Comuna or nothing. And uh, then he made all the history of many things that I don't have time to explain here. Um, but explained that the Comuna is not only a problem of having some resources and so on, but to have that spirit, that idea connected to all development projects. That the problem is that we have a lot I mean, investment in, in, in highways, in, in railways, in bridges and whatever, in big plants and so on, and as Chavez asked, it, where are the communas? Where are they linked to those development projects? We have to change the structure of the country, socio-politically and socio-economically, where is the project? And here is a, the dramatic situation we have, where the same Chavez says that we have to rebuild the whole state, that the state is part of the heritage of the old days, with corruption and so on. And this is a block uh, that community movement in Venezuela is, is having. The same counterpart at the official level of the state, dealing with the communities, sometimes is our friend, but sometimes is our enemy. So, um, there are quite a few things I would like to explain, but I don't think I have time for that. Um, but it's part of the key project, the Comuna of Chavez. And his frustration was, in the 20th of October last year, when you see the plan which was supposed to be ended by nine, uh, 2013, um, we should have had in the plan, as a result of the plan, the social economy, a strong one, uh, smaller state enterprises, and still big private enterprises. But the actual reality is that the state became bigger, the, the private became a little bit smaller, but the social economy is still minimal. And this one was the reason of the frustration, and he was pushing for the change in that. The reason why, many, um, but one, for instance, just to mention, uh, apart from the state problem, we have the election problem. In, 18, in 15 years, thank you, in 15 years, 19 elections. So everything is focused to election because the fighting main battle ground is elections. As Lula said or Chavez, if you don't have an election, you invent one because the fight was tough and therefore you make a law for community and eventually you use the community as a mechanism or machinery for elections. And that is affecting the process, the quality of the process, the formation of the people, and so on. And, um, well, I would say that is a, is a main thing and I'm glad to answer any question. And of course there is um, another comment I may be able to do later on uh, the prophecies, on the prophecy of Marx, that somebody said that Marx was not a pro prophet, uh, and that the Marxism is not to adapt to explain our present situation and solve that, but there is something interesting there, which I think it is interesting to inform you. Thank you very much indeed. <coughs> Thank you very much.